God bless you. My name is Melissa Flores and I am excited for what God is about to do um, in your life. If this word is for you, I'm just, it's just an honor and a privilege to be able to share my testimony, to give God glory out of what he's done in me and through me and around me for my good and his glory. So, um, you know, this topic, um, the elephant in the room, and, you know, I was excited when just being asked, I just felt such an excitement in my spirit. I'm like, Lord, I'm like, uh, I got a lot of things going on. Um, but I'm like, okay, Lord, if this is something you want me to do, Lord, uh, you know, give me a word. So the Lord, um, gave me abuse. And I was like, okay, I will do it. And uh, I'm here to simply give the Lord glory for what I've been through, you know, and the perseverance um, and holding on to faith. So um, again, my name is Melissa and, um, and this is my testimony. Um, you know, I've been through a lot in my life and um, Abuse is something that's is hard. It's a very hard topic to talk about. And it's something that we don't really like to talk about with other people because we're afraid that how they're going to look at us or look at our partner. Um, but, you know, this is something that's happening all over the world and, and in different homes. And abuse is happening in so many different ways. And so... This is a topic that, you know, children don't even like to talk about when things are happening bad to them, you know, so, but being able to come out and just let you know that, you know, just because we're believers in the Lord, it doesn't mean that we don't go through things. And I love that, you know, God has always given me a heart of transparency that I'm able to be transparent. You can ask me whatever and truth be told, I would tell you the truth. You know, there's no sugarcoating anything, and I'm grateful to God for that. But, um, you know, talking about abuse is a hard topic. And, you know, I prayed, I've been praying all day and just asking the Lord to just guide me in, in what he wants me to share with you. And uh, it's been an emotional thing because, you know, but tears of joy. Um, but it's it's part of your, your healing process that we do cry sometimes, you know, and it only strengthens up. But, um, but here's my testimony and I definitely will give you scriptures as well. Um, and it's always been a struggle for me to do videos. So this is really out of my comfort zone, but you know, I have peace from the Lord right now. And so I'm grateful for that. And so my testimony is that, you know, I went through, um, a marriage that, um, was abusive and, I was in denial. I kind of like, I guess, didn't really believe that I was in an abusive relationship um, with my spouse. Um, I kind of just didn't recognize it, I guess, in the beginning. I just really didn't give any attention to it. I really didn't know um, clearly. And God was always sending me, you know, people for me to minister to that were going through that. And I would encourage them you know, and to hold on to faith and stuff. And um, not realizing that like they didn't know, nobody knew that, you know, I was going through stuff too, just because I didn't speak about it and people weren't there in my home, you know, um, cause I, I just kept it to myself. And that was something that I cried out to God for. And then um, when I first got married, six months into my marriage, my spouse put his hands on me um and i was devastated i was just like what and it was something so so i mean something that somebody should not have got angry for it was something so little um but when it happened i had marks on my face and um i heard the lord tell me forgive him and I was like I was just like what like 
it's like everything just happened so fast and I just didn't know, you know, like, what, Lord? Like, he just put his hands on me and, you know, I'm like, Lord, I don't know. And so then I just like, okay, fine, Lord. I give him to you. I forgive him. And at that moment, I received the peace that surpasses all understanding because I heard God. He said, forgive him. I said, okay. He gave me a choice whether I was going to hold on to what just physically happened to me or was I going to let it go and let him. Because we have to understand that even though we're going through these different situations of abuse, God still loves our abuser too. God wants to love on them and work in them as well as us too. So, you know, God said, forgive them. Because you know what? Anger, someone, if someone has anger issues, that's a spirit. And so it's not even the, their spirit that they're operating out of. It's, a, it's something that has nothing to do with me but the enemy against me, right? So I forgave, I received the peace that surpasses all understanding. And, you know, I continue to, um, you know, strive and pray and, and just ask God to guide me and, you know, and submitting and, you know, and my husband ran away for like eight months um, in the beginning after the six months. And um, I ended up going following him wherever he was and things end up getting worse um and i'm not saying i'm not telling you my testimony to like say oh he's all this and that you know um i always protected his his image and i've always kept it to myself because i didn't want people to look at him like bad or like make judgments about him because I know that God still loved him and you know trying to extend that grace and you know not trying to put anything out there so that people could gossip about stuff so I really kept it to myself and that's why I didn't really reach out to any of the sisters in the beginning and like I mean I did have a couple close sisters close to me but um, that I confided in, but I, I was just hurting and, and I felt like I was dying inside and, you know, and I'm like, Lord, Lord, I would cry out to the Lord. And like things just got worse and worse and worse. And I did reach out to um, my senior pastor at the time. And he told me the advice he gave me when I explained everything to him. He said, Melissa, I'm going to tell you, I've done marriage counseling and talked to a lot of married couples. He's like, no matter what your spouse chooses, you can't make him stay. You can't, you know, force him to be with you if he doesn't want to be there. Like, you can't force him to be a husband. You can't force him anything. He's like, he has free will. But I'm going to tell you that a lot of women, they run away from God because of a relationship. And he's like, you hold on to faith. And that's exactly what I've held on to. In my toughest moments, I'm like, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I don't know why this is happening or this or that, you know. I would pray to God and sometimes I wouldn't wait for the answer and you know I would do things in my own strength and it would get worse and I'm like Lord help me Lord help me I said Lord I would my favorite scripture was Jeremiah 29 11 and I would tell the Lord like Lord you told me that you have a plan and a purpose for my life I ended up getting pregnant at the worst time of my marriage. And I ended up being homeless, being pregnant. Um, and that was really hard and it was difficult. And, you know, putting my kids through that because I felt an obligation 
um, to stay. I felt like I'm married and, and I'm stuck. I felt like I made a covenant with the Lord and my spouse to thick or thin, better or worse. And it was so hard to just be pregnant, jumping around, living in a shelter. Um, and I ended up going back. You know, we're having a kid together. This is my spouse. Thinking things are gonna change now because I'm, I come back home seven, about seven months pregnant. Two weeks into me coming home, I give birth at seven months. Um, everything's looking fine. And um, I get pregnant again. And that was hard. I was always home. Um, you know, my spouse was not going to church anymore. Um, and controlling. Um, controlling who and what and where I can go and uh, I chose to breastfeed my kids so while I'm pregnant I'm breastfeeding my second child with him um, and he would come home angry go to the bar come home choke me and one day um, I'm my my son uh, he was there on the bed playing the little game and I was breastfeeding my youngest daughter and he came from bar and he just started to argue with me um, and he said I'm gonna kill you so he grabbed me by my neck and like tossed me on a chair while I'm breastfeeding so I had to toss my baby on the bed and at that moment he's choking me um, I was like, Lord, Lord, Lord. I started crying out to the Lord. He said, the Lord can't even help you. Your son's not here, he can't help you. And all of a sudden the door opened in the room and it was my daughter. I wanna say my daughter was 11 um, or 10, something like that. And she's like, mom, are you okay? And then he told her to get out the room. And he stopped and he ran and then he left for like seven days from the house. Um, the next day, my daughter was like, mom, because I didn't realize me staying in this situation, how it was really affecting my kids. And my daughter was like, mom, she's like, I was so afraid. I don't want to lose you. You know, I didn't know if you were going to die. She's like, if I wouldn't have opened that door, I don't think you would have been alive today. And I cried, and I cried, and I cried, and I cried. I was like, wow. I didn't know that staying in a controlling, abusive relationship affected my kids. I was so blinded. But it's like I wanted everything to work, but it wasn't working. You can't force somebody to make something work. And I wasn't trying to force it. But like there was times I didn't even fight back. And there was times that I did, um, but I was like, Lord, help me. Lord, there's plenty of times that in the middle of an argument, a middle of a battle, I just get on my knees and start praying to the Lord. And I could feel the Lord put a blanket over me. I could feel the presence of God on me, like covering me, shielding me as I cry out to him. But you know what? Like, it's just, it got worse. And the Lord made a way out for me. You know, it was hard, a difficult road. And the pain got worse. It got worse and worse and worse. And I was like, Lord, I don't wanna live no more. I, you know, like, I, I don't wanna, be a single mom with four kids. I'm like, Lord, you need to heal my heart. You need to take this pain away from me. Like, I don't deserve to be treated. I'm a good, faithful wife. Why is this happening to me? Like, and it, the more I ask God to reveal to me the truth of what's going on, 
I said, Lord, show me what's happening in the dark. The things that I was blinded to, God, like show me what's happening. And oh my gosh, I did not know what I was asking the Lord. But guess what? The Lord revealed to me and it hurt me even more. It hurt me more to see. And when I saw, when I saw, it broke me even more. And I was like, Lord, I started to get anxiety. I started to have panic attacks. I started to just have all these things like from somebody, you know, it's just when you have somebody control you and for so long and when you start to see these things, um, it's just, I, I was devastated. I was devastated. I was hurt. I was broken. I said, Lord, I don't want to live. I don't want to be a single mom or four kids. I said, Lord, take me take me I don't want to feel this pain I didn't get married to get divorced like no but I was like the Lord said think about your kids and I was like you know what I repented and I asked God to forgive me I'm like you're right who's gonna pray and and fight for my kids the way that I would fight for my kids no one so, you know, I repented at that moment and asked God to heal my heart. Because every time I seen him, I would think of all the hurt, the pain, the abuse, everything. It started to play over and over in my head. And I was just like, no. I was like, Lord, I can't do this. I'm like, Lord, just take me out. Just take me out or heal my heart, God. Because every time I see him, I felt it replaying over and over. And I just like, I felt like I was getting stabbed all over again. Every time I would see him, I said, Lord, I can't live like this. And I kept crying out to God and crying out to God and crying out to God. I worked and I prayed and I worshiped and I cried out to God and cried out to God. And guess what the Lord did? The Lord started to heal my heart. And it was a process where I died inside every day. Like I would have bags under my eyes from crying and I would just pray and worship the Lord. And, and, and I kept telling him, Lord, you said you have a plan and a purpose for my life. Lord, you said that you have a plan, not for evil, but for a good. Lord, you said. And I held on to that. I held on to that. In my brokest, most painful moment, I was like, Lord, I don't want anybody to ever go through what I've been through. This is hurtful. This is, this is painful. But the more that I searched for the Lord, the more that I found him, the more that I thought, okay, here I am going through the, the worst time in my life. And every person that said there would be there for me isn't. I'm all alone. And all I could do was just cry out to the Lord, cry out to the Lord, pray and worship and I couldn't pray with words, but I was holding on to praying in the spirit. And that's what got me through. That's what strengthened me up. Is like, I'm like, Lord, I don't know what to pray. I'm just so hurt. I'm in so much pain. And I just kept reaching out for the Lord. And in those moments, the Lord, he used me. He was using me in the most painful time in my life. He had me humbling myself. It's not about me, but about him and what he wants to do. He started using me to speak to people. And I was hurting so much inside. I'm like, Lord, like, but the Lord said, seek ye the kingdom of God first and everything else will be added to you. And that's all I knew what to do was just run after God. And that's what I held on to. I held on to what my senior pastor said was no matter what, hold on to faith. Yes, things got thrown at me left and right and getting blackmailed and all kinds of stuff happened, you know, confiding in the wrong people. But you know what I said, you know what, I don't care. Let it happen. You wanna blackmail me for something I am not doing? Then that's fine. The Lord said, humble yourself. You know what, there's always gonna be 
people throwing stones at you. But it's okay because they don't know the truth. They need to seek God too. But it's okay. You just have to run after God. No matter what, run after God with everything you got. Run after Him. Because He's the only one that can truly heal your heart. You know, I have a couple of scriptures, you know, that the Word of God, when you just eat on the Word, the Word is healing to your soul. Let me tell you, like, I didn't have no one but God, but God wanted it that way. Because running to someone is easy, but running to God with everything, He was the only one that can truly, truly heal my heart. And, you know, I ran after Him and he literally healed my broken heart and you know in isaiah 41 10 the lord says to fear not for i am with you be not dismayed for i am your god i will strengthen you yes i will help you i will uphold you with my righteous right hand god is our strength so I'm here to tell you that God is your strength. No matter what type of abuse you're experiencing, you have to know that you have to lean on the strength of the Lord because you cannot do this on your own. My situation might not be the same exact as yours, but pain of abuse is pain that we've all in some way or somehow have experienced that pain of a loss or whatever. Pain is pain. And it's like that sorrow pain, that, that devastating, that you want to die pain. Like, you know, it's, it's so hurtful. I was like, Lord, I don't want nobody to ever go through this. Lord. But the Lord had me ministering to different people. And like, I felt the presence of God so thick. And I'm like, Lord. But in those moments, because when you're led by the Holy Spirit, it's not you speaking. It's the Holy Spirit speaking through you. So what was happening was, I'm thinking, okay, the Holy Spirit is ministering to this person. Really, that's for me. And the Lord wants us to come to Him. Yes, it's good to be having sisters in the Lord to link on to, to, to help encourage you and uplift you. But you have to really pray and ask God, who is it you should speak to about your situation? Because not everyone's for you, unfortunately. You know, I have a couple of scriptures for you, you know. The Lord says, come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. We can find rest in the Lord and that's Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. We, no matter what our, our situation or what we're going through, we can find rest in the Lord. You know, the Lord wants to heal you and deliver you today. Abuse is something you can't, you know, in my situation, I did it alone, but I chose to run to the Lord. You might not be that strong to run to the Lord for yourself. That's why we need our brothers, our sisters in the faith, whether it's your physical brother that's a believer you know a uncle or aunt you know like we need the body of christ you know you have to know that the lord will never leave you or forsake you the lord says in jeremiah 30 19 but i will restore you to health and heal your wounds declares the lord that's what the lord did for me he restored my health. I had a broken heart that was shattered in a million, billions of trillions of pieces. And I didn't think that it could ever be repaired. But guess what? The Lord repaired my heart and he gave me a new heart. And the Lord wants to give you a new heart today that no matter who's cracked it, broke it, shattered it, the Lord is your healer. And he wants to restore you back to health so that you know what your worth is and your value. Because we can't allow people to put worth and value on us. Because they so easily do it if we allow them to. And I wasn't strong enough to fight back. I wasn't strong enough to fight this on my own because God did not design us to do this on our own. Cannot do things in our own strength. We have to allow the Lord to strengthen us. 
Isaiah 40, 29 and 31 says, He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. How good is our God? He will increase our strength. So when we are weak, he is strong. And even when we're weak, he'll give us strength. He'll give us more strength. He'll increase it. But we have to run to him. His word, his word right here has power. And, you know, Psalms 119.50 says, This my comfort and my affliction that you promise gives me life. That even if we're going through abuse, no matter if it's verbal, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual abuse, or any other type of abuse, because there's so many, um, we have to know that God's promises gives us life. God's promises don't change for our life just because we go through stuff. God still loves our abusers regardless. But my encouragement to you is that how do you heal from abuse? Number one, run to God. Run to the one that, that can only heal your heart. Not only that, you know, get around a community of believers, you know, that will support you, emotionally support you, because that's important. And, and, you know, another thing is that you do have to forgive your abuser. Forgiveness is key. Forgiveness, even if it hurts so much, you forgive. And if you can't, you have to ask God because that's something that we can't always do on our own. You give them over to God. Let God deal with them. God still loves them. You know, we still have to forgive 70 times 70, right? Right? So... We give them to God and ask God to give us the strength to forgive those that we cannot forgive on our own. And that we have no bitterness or hatred in our heart towards them. And for God to teach us how to walk in love. And that we hold no bitterness or hatred against that person that has abused us. And you know, just lifting them up in prayer too. Because the truth is they need Jesus too. You know, God wants us to live in freedom. The freedom of forgiveness. Isn't that awesome? And, you know, anger. Some people live with anger. And it's a spirit. So we have to pray. Pray that that person would give up anger in Jesus' name. You know, God has a, a plan and a future for our life. You know, there's nothing impossible with God if we just believe. You know, hold on to faith. If this is for you today, I just want to encourage you. God healed me. I have physical scars on my face from the abuse that I've experienced. So every day that I wake up, I see these physical scars of what I went through. And I remember when I got them, I was just like, oh my gosh, like, I'm always going to remember this moment of what just happened to me. And that was hard. I was like, Lord, like, Lord, but you have to know that when you reach out to the Lord, even though there may be a physical scar, but that scar gives God glory. Because that's something that he took you out of. Something that you couldn't take yourself out of. But God took you out of that. Why? Because he loves you. He didn't create us women to be abused in any type of way. We're precious unto the Lord. He made us to be more precious than rubies. Do you not know that you're fearfully wonderfully made in the image of God? That he loves you. His love is everlasting. And if this is for you, I encourage you today to just trust the Lord with your process. It doesn't matter. I cried and I cried every day, every day, every day. Like, And I couldn't pray with words. If you can pray in the spirit, 
Even if it's five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, do it, do it. That is what has helped me in this time that was so difficult for me. And you have to understand too, is that in these situations, like God gives us warnings, but sometimes we dismiss them because we wanna do our own way. God gave me warnings in different times in my life, but God is warning you. He said, I, I reminded him, I'm like, Lord, Lord, you said you were gonna, you'll make a way out. Your word says, Lord, you'll make a way out. Make a way out for me, God. I cannot get myself out of this situation, Lord. You make a way out for me. And guess what? The Lord made a way out for me. And it's only because I ran to him. It's only because I trusted him. It's only because he was the only one that can truly heal my heart. I couldn't heal my own heart. I wanted to die. I couldn't do it. I'm like, Lord, heal my heart. That when I see this man or see anyone that has hurt me or abused me in any type of way, that I don't hold anything against them, Lord. Because I know that vengeance is the Lord's. If they choose not to repent or whatever, that's between them and God. You give them over to God. Let God deal with them. Amen? So I just wanted to just encourage you that just know that you're not alone. We all, in some way or some form in our lives, have experienced abuse. Whether it was a leader, pastor, a spouse, a parent. There's always something, even somebody out on the street could have talked down to you. And, and, you know, I've seen so many things that I'm just like, wow. But I just wanted to encourage you that just to give it to God. Give it to the Lord. Run after him with everything you got. And know that there's hope in him. And that there's an everlasting love for you. That he gives to you because he loves you. And he'll always make a way out. I pray that the Lord will give you strength to do what you know that needs to be done. I wasn't strong enough to leave on my own. I wasn't strong enough to say, I can't, this, no. The Lord had to remove me because I couldn't do it on my own. Sometimes our situations don't change because we're stuck. We don't know how to get ourselves out of it. But God is going to make a way for you. Because he is a way maker. And I'm just so grateful um, to God. As much as I wanted everything. I wanted what I wanted and that was it. But God was like, no, this is not what I have for you. I have something greater and better for you. You know, God's timing is best. Just hold on to the hope and the love of your Savior, your healer, your deliverer. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. Deliver you. Not only you, but him too. Or her too. Whoever is the abuser. God loves you both. So I just encourage you. Just let me just pray for you um, at this moment. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I just thank you for every woman, Lord God. I thank you, Father God. I just plead the blood of Jesus over them from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet, Father God. Father God, I pray that you would make a way out for them, God. Make it clear to them the way out that you have for them, Lord God. Father God, send legions of angels to protect them and guide them and lead them into all truth, Lord God. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for them being here and being able to to listen to this message, oh God, that they only know if it was for them, Lord God. But you know them, God. You know them by name, God. You know every tear and every hurt and every pain that they've experienced, oh God, through this abuse, Lord God. I pray healing and deliverance over them right now, God. Father God, I pray for the peace that surpasses all understanding to fall upon them, Lord God. Father God, I pray that you would open up their eyes to see and their ears to hear, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, have your will and your way in their life, God. Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that every broken heart will be mended and fixed and healed, Lord God. 
Father God, if there's any hearts that have been hardened, God, because of this abuse, oh God. Father God, I ask you to remove that old stony heart. Give them a heart of flesh, oh God. Give them, oh God, a heart after your own heart, Lord. Father God, whatever is broken, oh God. We pray, Father God, that you would fix it, that you would restore it. You would restore what the locusts have eaten in their lives, oh God. Father God, reveal yourself to them like you've never had before in a different way, Lord God. Beyond what they could think or imagine, Lord God. Do exceedingly abundantly above. Holy Spirit, have your way and your will in their life. Healing and deliverance in Jesus' name. Healing and deliverance in Jesus' name. Lord, have your way in Jesus' name. Lord, surround them, God, with mighty women of God that they may get counsel from, Lord. Send those labors in their path, oh God, if they're not into a church, oh God. Send labors in their path, oh God. Open up the airways, the byways, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Lord, have your way. Amen. Well, God bless you. It was a privilege and an honor, and I thank you. God bless you.